Hello folks and welcome back. Uh, today we have the Sangukaku Japanese maple that we did the top reduction on and we did the thread grafting to the lower branches. All the thread grafts ta have taken now and are growing. As you can see the tree has really responded to the chopping of the top. Um, we have some of the lower branches here trying to be the apically dominant branch so today what we're going to need to do is some branch reduction techniques which is also going to help with um, getting more compact growth and more tertiary branches as well as allowing what we plan on having as the apex of the tree be the apex of the tree. So as these branches here grow it's going to weaken what is wanting to be the apex. Um, it got a little bit of sunburn on it and it has died back to a set of two leaves so we're really going to have to focus on keeping these lower portions of the branching and, and the, the structure of this tree in check to allow the strength to be divert it up there. After we do the initial cutting on this today you're going to see that the uh, the top has started dying back as I figured it would because that's just what Japanese maples do um, and you'll see that a little bit more detail once we get to a point where we can see into the tree but for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this back and then we'll be back with you in a few moments. Alright we're back as you can see, I've taken probably 60% of the foliage off of this tree. Um, and a lot of it was sucker branches and back budding on the tree where I didn't necessarily want it. So I wanted to make sure I removed all those instantaneously. Uh, the two thread grafts that we did on this tree, one is here and one is here, are both alive and doing well. I did not touch anything on those branches. I want those branches to try to be dominant down there so they can grow so the thread graft union will take and then we can sever them next season. I do have one concern. As I was thinning out the area up here, I did notice that I've got a dead spot below where my apex is where I want it to be. Um, and then I kind of made a little bit of a mistake and I've chopped some some uh, front facing branches down here off before I realized what I was dealing with up here. I still think that this is going to li live and it's going to be okay but that's something we're going to have to watch over the course of this growing season. But as you can see now this this is where I want my apex to be and it's the highest branching on the entire tree. So hopefully that'll redirect the energy towards that tree that particular branch and that'll grow up and become dominant uh, just like it originally was when we let it grow free to get the thickening that we got at the top here. Um, lower branch here, still not sure if I want to keep this or not. I'm letting it grow just you know for the simple fact that this wound right here needs energy directed towards it so it can close over. Um, the other other wounds for the major branches that we've done, they're doing really really well. I'm going to probably re-wound these as well today and then put some cut paste around them so they continue their callousing over as well. Um, the one at the top is is doing well also. All the all the cut sites are doing really well. This lower lowest one is probably doing the poorest out of all of them, but it is still making progress. It's still continually callousing over. It's going to take the longest, of course, because it's at the bottom of the tree. The higher up the tree, the more energy there is, which means that it's going to heal over a little bit quicker. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Um, we'll do a 360 and I'm also going to do a close up for you so you can see what I'm talking about on the top here with the die back in the little area that I don't know why it just decided right there in the very front it wanted to start dying back a little bit but I mean it happens. The tree's going to do what the tree wants to do. Um, I can just kind of nudge it in the direction that I want it to be in. So I'll do a quick 360 for you here. Every other branch on this tree I've cut back to one set of two leaves. Uh, the way that these Japanese maple grow, you have a stalk and then you have two leaves that come out. Those two leaves eventually will form two more branches. So I've compacted the tree a lot, which is also going to help with ramification. Because every one of these sites that I cut it back to two sets of leaves, those are the buds that are going to develop next year to become next year's branches. Which, you know, you, you got branches and then branches and that's how you develop your ramification. So I'm going to let the two graft unions grow freely this season from here. I'm going to let this top grow freely from here. If I start getting a lot of additional growth here at the top, I'm just going to keep aggressively cutting it back so I can allow and redirect the energy towards the apex here. Hopefully that'll stop this dieback right here from happening and it'll start closing over as well. Um, I anticipated this dieback at the top. That's why before, if you remember, we left a lot of extra 
because I knew it would die back to this this node where the apex is going to be. Um, I did get two bud two buds pop right there at that node, so I've got the apex and then I've got a back branch. I've cut the back branch back to two sets of leaves as well, just to keep it alive, keep it there. Um, we always may need a backup, so we we've got it now if we need it. So let's do a quick 360 on this one, and we will uh, we will go ahead and go to the next tree. We'll let this one go back out on the bench. We're going to feed it a little bit. We're not going to aggressively feed it because now we're really not in the stage where we need to aggressively feed this tree. If we aggressively feed this tree, it's going to explode with growth way too much, and that's not what we're after now. This one's more towards developing the ramification and the tracery of twigs that will become the ultimate outline of the tree when we're finished with it. So we're not going to feed it as aggressively. We are still going to give it as plenty of water. It's going, to get, it's going to be put back out in full sun on the bench, and uh, we'll check back with this one again in the fall. So let's go ahead and do a quick 360 for you. I'll go ahead and zoom in real quick, and um, so you can see what we we're talking about about the top here with the die back. Um, I did get a ton of back budding back here in the back. I've cut it all back off. If you let that stuff grow where you don't want it, it's going to be an ugly bump there, and you want to avoid that if you can. Um, I did let the wire dig in on this tree a little bit too much. I'm kind of concerned with this upper branch here. Uh, this lower branch I'm not concerned with as much because I'm just going to let it grow freely so it thickens up a little bit more. But we may end up having to remove this upper branch um, if we get a back bud up underneath here to maybe recreate this branch on the tree. So let's go ahead and zoom in and um, see what we're talking about at the top here with the die back. Hope you guys can see that. Right here is where this dieback's happening. And above that up here is where the apex is. So hopefully this, by cutting all of this back, it's going to redirect energy towards where I want the apex to be. Um, and then of course you can see at the top here, move this up a little bit, where we got the dieback there initially where we made the first cut site. So you can see right there on the uh, Right there's the apex, and that dieback's just below it. But all the way around the rest of the branch right here, it's not a collar, it's just this one spot. And the back side of the tree, let's see if I can turn this around and you can see the back side of the tree. The back side of the tree is completely green. So, well, hands are in the way a little bit, but it's completely green in the back of the tree. So I'm not 100% worried about it, but it's definitely something I want to keep an eye on. And um, yeah, that's it. We'll take it out to the bench and let it grow and we'll see what happens and we'll revisit this maybe late, late summer, early fall. Thanks for watching.